Okay, let's look at the battery charging end of it. As I stated in the last video, you don't want to use the AV plug LED for tuning. So what I have here is a red LED in series with the two wires, or with the one wire going to the positive terminal of the battery. Now let me show you a schematic of this. This should be pretty basic and this shouldn't really be required, but for those of you that don't quite understand what's going on here, as you can see the cathodes of the red LED and of the uh, 1N4148 at the top go to the plus of the battery. The anode of the 1N4148 at the bottom goes to the negative of the battery. If you have these wrong, you're going to actually power the cell from the battery. You're not going to be passing current back into the battery to charge it. So basically that's the connection. Now use a red lead. The reason for that is you, got, you have to realize that you've got about a 0.5 to 0.7 volt drop across D1 and D2 and with a red lead you're going to have about 1.7 volt drop across D3. If you use a white lead you're going to have from 3.2 to 3.7 volt drop across that. Now whenever you have a drop like that what you're doing is you're dissipating power as well as the photons that are being emitted in the in the lead but you're decreasing the available voltage to be applied to that battery with the charge. So be sure to use that red lead. Now this cell has never been run. It's got fresh water in it. That's something I'll mention right now is that the... I didn't get it on, did I? Okay, there it is. The cell will run on just about anything. Uh, I hate to uh, say to use distilled water. If you have it, I would say experiment with it. But if we want to use something like this in a third world environment, they're not going to have distilled water available to them. And plus the fact to distill the water takes energy and we're going to take and drop below the uh, meaningful line here on if this is or is not effective. So here we have the cell. We have the red lead series. Red lead is used to tune. If you watch that lead, let me get it down. Watch the lead while I get on the tuning capacitor. You'll see that, you see it diminishes. Let me turn this light out. Maybe it'll work a little better. Get back on the tuning capacitor. And you see that we get up here. We reach a real point right there. That's maximum current passing out of the electrolysis cell into the battery as charge current. Now let's take a look. Let's see if we can get down here and see what's going on with this cell. And it should not be hard to see that the cell has our hoops. Oh yeah, I always go too far. It's called fat fingering the camera. Okay, you can see right now that uh, we have gas liberation. And as that water conditions, uh, it's going to increase, obviously. And again, 12 volts, 40 milliamps, 400 milliwatts. We're power powering that LED to full brightness. Probably running, I'll tell you, probably around 10 to 12 milliamps into that battery. And then So basically that's it. It's fairly simple on how you actually charge this battery. And as far as what is the effective, effectiveness of this particular methodology, well, I'm going to leave that to you to determine. If you have an electronic load or if you have a resistor, get the specifications like I told you in, in the last video. Uh, you've got to understand your battery somewhat and understand how to determine if you have a real charge or a phantom charge. It will be well worth your time. Now one thing that uh, you will find though that still is going to happen here, we're not going to lose the metal when we're using stainless, but 
we are going to end up having some pretty dirty water. And of course, if you're going to use brackish water, gray water, whatever, it's going to be a lot worse than that. This is tap water right here. Uh, no filtration or anything, so it has chlorine in it and who knows what else. Probably fluoride. But anyway, uh, there's going to be an amount of maintenance involved here, so uh, don't be discouraged if you run one of these for a while and you see everything sludge up on it. That's a result of what you're using for an electrolyte, and there's just no way around that unless you want to limit the overall efficiency of this circuit and go to something like distilled water. Then you can reduce that phenomenon quite, quite readily. But uh, in this particular case, you're going to have maintenance. So if you have a production cell, which we'll show as we go along, a production cell is going to require maintenance. You're going to have to take it down every now and then, clean it, uh, wash everything out, brush off the electrodes, and put it back into operation. But I don't think that's too much to ask for, for what you're going to find this particular uh, simple, and I say simple with a capital S, circuit does. And of course you've already seen in the first two videos uh, what you can do with it from the standpoint of light while you're producing gas. I want to reiterate that what I am doing here is trying to obtain for you enough gas for a cooking flame and either a light source or for charging a battery with a fairly high efficiency uh, from a sec exciter. So we're going to go ahead and move on. We've got six minutes on this tape. That's probably the last one I'm going to do for a couple of days. I have some other work commitments I'm going to have to get out of the way, but I will not let this series die again. We'll go ahead and continue on, and uh, only good things can come of it.